Good morning, everyone. So today I'm working on replacing my AC condenser. Um, this is the old one. It's a ream. Uh, it still works, but it's developed a small issue where the compressor slugs really bad, and turns out it was because of a kinked line set, but you can't see that until you rip it out of the ceiling, but it's 12 years old. It's time for it to go. I'm trying to get a more efficient unit. So now I'm sure everybody who's interested in trying to replace their unit, you know, comes across one of these. It's a Mr. Cool two to three ton inverter condenser. It's a heat pump as well. Um, so the ultimate goal for me is to try to get off natural gas as much as possible because the rates have been going insane where I live. I live in central Wisconsin. Um, so I built the stand to keep it about 24 inches off the ground so that way snow don't get up inside it and it can defrost correctly. Um, it looks like a standard mini split condenser but it is much larger and it's heavy. So you definitely, if you plan on putting one of these on a stand, this is not a one man or even a two man thing where it took three guys back here to lift this thing up here to get it up on the stand. Um, so I'm not done yet. I had to, I have to do all the wiring yet and I have to run the new line set downstairs yet. Um, I chose not to use the pre-charge line set because I am uh, versed and skilled in the trade. I can do brazing, I can do the vacuuming and all that stuff. So I chose to use a conventional line set just for cost. But you know, they always say these things are DIY and I could see you know, a person doing them by themselves if they're not skilled, but there's still, you know, hazardous voltage you have to deal with and you have to know how to set these things up. So I, I've replaced several condensers and installed many of those dike and mini splits in my life. So it's not like it's a verse for me, but just something to bear in mind, I suppose, if you do plan on purchasing one of these units. Now they have a bad rap because they're a cheaper condenser and they're not one of the big name brands like Ream or American Standard, Carrier, Train. But because of my, because I'm skilled in this, I figured, why not? Because if anything goes wrong with it, I can fix it. Um, but I, I guess we'll see how it goes. And this is just kind of an intro video to it. I'm currently working downstairs in my basement, which I'll take you guys down there. And you can see what I'm currently doing with the furnace. So stay tuned. Okay, so now we're downstairs. Um, this is the utility room. So I already have the old coil out. I'm putting another ream coil in, but it's a three ton versus a two. And that's to give the coil extra capacity for refrigerant when it's running in heat pump mode or heating mode rather. So I mean, you didn't, I didn't have to change it because it was a two ton coil on there, but it's really rusty and old and I figured with the new system we'll put a new coil in so it matches the ream furnace so it'll look you know if looks are your thing it'll look decent but so they get this coil out they didn't leave me any room for my duct work up here to go up so i actually had to take the bricks out and put a board underneath there and drop the furnace down yeah, obviously you have to disconnect the gas drop the furnace down and then i could slide the coil out and the coil is right here so, I mean, you can't really tell how dirty it is because you, this is the top side, so the air is coming towards you like this, but, yeah. And again, for its age, it does pretty well. But, it goes without saying, you know, we always like new shiny stuff. So, I mean, I've already kind of dabbled in the heat pumps a little bit. I installed that three years ago. That's a heat pump water heater. A hybrid. And that's been phenomenal it saves you know compared to what i was paying for natural gas before that was probably 50 60 dollars a month to heat water for my family now that's maybe 18 bucks a month i have a so this utility room is pretty small but i have a fully finished basement and there's a lot of air for this thing to draw in so that helps with that but maybe another video for that one so i'm gonna go get the other coil i'm gonna slap it on here and i'm gonna start running the line set i already cut all the old line set out there's some of it over there so we'll uh keep chugging along so i can get this thing running 
All right, so new coils in. I gotta do some tape around the stuff and get it sealed up yet. But I got the cover all off and I got the TXV bulb out of the way so we can braze these uh, connections up without damaging anything. But yeah, all nice and new. Making a lot of aluminum now. I yeah, did not know that. But yeah, you can see all the gaps in the case up there. So we don't want any air leakage, so I'll have to tape up those edges as soon as I'm done. But moving right along, so now I'm going to go uh, get ready to pull the line set and we'll get that down here. Alright, so it's been a few hours. Um, I was working on brazing and bending the lines up. Kind of a pain in the butt to do by yourself, but I just got done doing a pressure test. It held out just fine. So now I'm running an evacuation on it. I'll have to secure the lines and get them wrapped yet, but I can do that while it's running the evacuation. Um, I use the Testo Smart Probes. So I got the vacuum hooked up on the liquid line and the probe hooked up on the suction, so it should be a true vacuum reading. Um, and I got my other phone over here. Currently it's too high for it to read right now, but that'll come down as the pump runs some more, pending there's no issues or leaks. So I guess if anybody buys these things and plans on using normal lines, make sure you get these adapters because I I can't imagine how much of a pain it would butt would be to bend this to get this up in here, and this is really easy to bend, so. So we're just chugging along now, waiting for this thing to finish up with the evacuation. I'm gonna start wiring it and get these lines tapped up, so. More to follow. All right, so I got the unit working now. It's the next day. We ended up getting late last night, so I gave up. But I took my humidifier duct out, or the panel, just so we could get a probe measurement with my Testo probe there. And it's running in heat pump mode right now. It's about 56 degrees outside, so it's not really a workout for it, but you can see we're getting 108 supply. That's uh, that's pretty good. So I got the line set all done. I put a five flow dryer. I put a side glass so I could see how the refrigerant charge is doing and see if there's any moisture in the system. But yeah. So we're looking at the outside. Or the, I'm sorry, the inside values right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys outside so I can show what the condenser looks like and sounds like. All right, so here's the unit outside. Still got some mess to clean up. As you can see, it's connected and it's running. I got my smart probe on there to measure the discharge temperature. But in my original box, I ran a surge, it's not a surge protector, it's a voltage monitor, so that way if the voltage ever drops down too low, it'll cut the unit off and keep it from uh, turning back on for a few minutes. We have a lot of, uh, brownouts where I live so number one kill of electronics around here so that's just to protect that. The air coming out is very cold. You can tell it's a uh, hardly makes any noise compared to our, my last ream. So the probe has been on there for a little while. It's still going down a wee bit, but the air temperature coming off the unit is 50 degrees. It's moist out here right now. It's kind of raining a little bit, so. So we got 50 degrees on the discharge side. Let's move this uh, somewhere right about there and see what the intake is. Yeah, we'll let that climb for a minute and we'll look at it in a second. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed with it. I mean, the real test would be how well it cools when it's really cold out, or not cools, but heats when it's really cold outside. Um, as far as the DIY aspect of it, I mean, the way I did it, I personally wouldn't recommend it as a DIY solution. It uh, definitely requires some skills to install. 
and the problem is trying to find a contractor that'll install these things. So it's kind of a gamble either way, especially if you live where I live. Um, if you got their their A coil and their air handler and the low the Novak line sets, I'm sure this would be okay for some people to tackle. But um, the other thing is, people may ask why I didn't buy a two to three ton coil with this unit, and Due to the space constraints with my evaporator, not my, yeah, my evaporator on top of my furnace, I don't have room for their coil, so I had to buy the shorter end coil from Ream. I just upsized it in capacity, so hopefully it'll run a little bit more efficient. May lose some humidity removal ability with having a larger coil at a lower fan speed, but we'll have to wait and see in the summer how that performs. But. So we're only, it's only like 30, 53 degrees going in, and it's 50 degrees going out, but we're getting 100 degree, 108 degree input air or supply air out of the furnace. So that's pretty impressive. So I know this video was kind of hobbled together and it, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense for somebody trying to install one of these things. I just wanted to kind of give you my feedback on how these units are with a pre-existing furnace. So what I ended up doing is I ended up putting a three ton ream end coil on top of my furnace. I have it set to 900 CFM and then I re soldered a new line set on, I soldered, brazed a new line set on and I vacuumed it down to 450 microns it sat which is all fine and dandy and then because of my line set, I had to add five ounces of refrigerant on top of the existing charge. But yeah, she seems to be humming away. Pretty nice. The stand should keep it clear of snow in the winter. And it's underneath my awning, so it shouldn't get rained on too bad. My biggest thing I like about it is how quiet this thing is. I mean, it doesn't make any noise. The old unit, when it would kick on, you hear it start in the middle of the night, and it would sometimes wake you up if you're a light sleeper like I am. Because our room is like right there. That one. So. Well, I hope this video was helpful to somebody. Maybe making decisions and if you should ex add one of these to an existing unit if your condenser just dies. I mean, it works well for my application, but as always, your mileage will vary. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I'm hoping. I'll do updates on the longevity of the thing and how well it's been doing and when it gets really hot outside we'll do another video to see how well it, it cools in the summer. Um, that's it for now guys. Thanks for watching.